in the neighboring states. Will the Obama administration heed to what appears to be Israeli calls to wage a war on the government in Damascus? We will attempt to address all these questions and more in today's episode of Middle East Today. According to our professionalists, the head of military intelligence research in the Israeli army, Brigadier General Etai Brun, dropped the bombshell, stating that the Syrian government has used chemical weapons on a number of occasions, setting off a vigorous international debate about the next steps which ought to be taken in the Syrian crisis. The remarks by Brun followed repeated statements by U.S. President Barack Obama in which Obama stated that chemical weapons use in Syria was a red line, implying that the White House would notch up its military role against the Syrian leadership if indeed it was proven that this leadership used chemical weapons. The Israeli bombshell also came at a crucial time on the battlefield with the Syrian military making significant gains near the capital Damascus and the central city of Homs. They are trying to squeeze uh, President Obama that your red lines were crossed as well as your red lines were crossed in Iran. So they have broader perspective in the region. If you go to the uh, Syria, Iran, Hezbollah is highly important for Israel but the game changer for Israel, when you have this axis, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, surviving what is going now, mm. and backed by a great power as Russia. In this perspective, we have to see the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like a survival question if you have Iran, Iraq, Syria, Hezbollah, and backed by a great power, since this great power is, you know, not in a good term with the United States of America, this is a game changer. Expressions of support for Bashar al-Assad's downfall have been coming from Israeli politicians since the onset of the crisis. Assad, together with Iran and Hezbollah, compromise a strategic anti-Israeli alliance. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu himself has repeatedly referred to Iran as the biggest threat to Israel while Hezbollah, which is Iran's close ally, is believed to have dealt Israel its first strategic defeat in the 2006 war. Maryam Saleh takes a look at the Israeli stance towards the crisis in Syria. The Syrian crisis has been under scrutiny from many players in the world, and especially in the region. Israel is no exception. Israel has on several occasions stressed that it wants to see Bashar Assad out of the picture and has even set a pretext for a possible Israeli intervention. After the announcement of the Israeli army's intelligence chief, Itai Brun, that Syria was using chemical weapons and even transporting weapons into Lebanon, Israeli Premier Benjamin Netanyahu geared up his cabinet and stressed that Israel will use force to stop the transportation of Syrian weapons into Lebanon. Does Israel fear it will be a target of any Syrian attack? Our analysts tell us that, on the contrary, this may be a prelude to any Israeli attack against Syria. Uh, Israel has reached a result that uh, the Syrian regime will not fall easily as uh, most of the uh, allies of the uh, uh, armed opposition, Syrian armed oppositions were be believing. So because of that, Israel wants to, be, to see the Syrian regime uh, falling. Uh, now it created a pretext for the United States, which is the chemical weapons. Some analysts believe that with the rise of extremist groups inside Syria, the United States has become even more reluctant to take direct action inside Syria and could perhaps even be questioning the call for the ousting of Bashar Assad. However, Israel's ambassador to the United States, Michael Oren, had said in an interview that Bashar Assad has to go even if al-Qaeda operatives were to take over. Quote, if he goes now, we would view that as a positive development. He is an ally of Iran. He is an ally of Hezbollah. We understand that if jihadists were to come in, it wouldn't be good, but it perhaps wouldn't be as bad as the current situation. So, why is Israel insistent? And what would it benefit from the Syrian unrest? The answer is Hezbollah and Iran. Syria under the Assad family is viewed as the linchpin of the resistance bloc comprised of Iran, Hezbollah along with Syria itself. And while the crisis has done significant damage to Syria, any presumed Israeli goal of toppling Assad is still far from being achieved. 
Head of Israeli military intelligence, General Afif Kochafi, had said in a meeting that the Syrian Arab army has not lost its most influential generals and remains a capable enemy to Israel. Such a scenario would mean preserving and maybe even strengthening the Lebanese front and Iran. Syria has always been a significant player in the Middle East talks as part of the resistance bloc. Israel sees that it's to its benefit to keep the internal fighting going to weaken Bashar Assad's government so that it is not an obstacle to Israel enforcing its conditions in the Middle East talks, now frozen indefinitely. Last February, Israel launched a military attack against a scientific facility in Syria, declaring it was a weapons convoy on its way to Hezbollah. This has raised questions as to whether Israel could directly involve itself in the war on Syria. With Syria's role as a backer of resistance against Israeli occupation both in Lebanon and Palestine, it has won the enmity of Israel and has refused what it saw as unjust conditions by Israel in Middle East talks. The major fear now is that if Israel launches a unilateral strike against Syria in an effort to exacerbate the situation to the benefit of foreign-backed insurgents. But while it seems that Israeli officials are enthusiastic to get rid of Assad, it isn't clear if the Israeli declaration of Damascus crossing Obama's chemical weapons red line will in fact lead to U.S. military action aimed at toppling Bashar al-Assad. Initially, U.S. officials reacted by pointing to intelligence assessments of the use of serene gas on a small scale. However, in recent statements, American officials have reinforced the notion that the appetite for wars in Washington is long gone. The Obama administration says it's putting the brakes on jumping into U.S. military involvement in Syria. Despite whispers in Washington that the U.S. is considering stepping up its military role against Bashar al-Assad's government amid allegations of using chemical weapons, top officials say it wouldn't be in the U.S.'s best interests now. A lot of players are involved, and so we must continue to look at options and present those options based on all contingencies uh, with the focus uh, uh, that we all have, I think, in the international community. Despite the Syrian government denying the use of chemical weapons on Syrians or any plans of ever doing so, Western media is reporting fickle messages. Mixed reports surrounding the use of chemical weapons at times blame Assad and at other times blame insurgents, giving the White House pause before commanding military aid. We don't know how they were used, when they were used, who used them. We don't have a chain of uh, custody that establishes what exactly happened. Pressure on the Obama administration to take action is increasing amid reports that the toxic nerve agent sarin is being used in chemical weapons attacks. U.S. neocons and top Israeli officials have discussed a stronger U.S. response to the conflict in Syria, but the White House is reluctant. There was an intervention in Syria by the Israeli Air Force or in Lebanon. Uh, I, I think that I think that Israel has a voice here. Is it a decisive voice? Probably not. There are worries that U.S. foreign policy could repeat mistakes from the past. Iraq was no mistake. Iraq was oil. Iraq was Israel. Iraq was the permanent military bases that we coveted there. And Washington is feeling the pressure of a weary American public that is largely against war or further U.S. military intervention in the Middle East amidst an ongoing war with Afghanistan that is still claiming American lives. I kind of agree with the statement. I think we're already spread pretty thin. So uh, I don't think we can use another war. Iraq and Afghanistan. And we've been there too long. But one of the reasons we've been there too long is it's all volunteer. U.S. support for the rebels has got to be really uh, reevaluated. Uh, the rebels are, are, are being taken over by al Nusra and al Qaeda types to the extent that uh, uh, they, they basically are running the show over there. Adding to the complexity, fighting between the Syrian government and insurgents has increased, reaching the capital city, Damascus, and the central city of Homs, homeland of the Alawite minority sect that Assad has strong ties with. The U.S. is leery that it could be intervening in a Syria civil war. President Obama is resolute that having uh, extricated us from Iraq and being on the verge of withdrawing our, our last forces from Afghanistan next year and having, uh, at least in, in form, not gotten 
us uh, supposedly not involved with boots on the ground in Libya, he feels his record in that respect is pretty good. So the last thing he wants is to have the U.S. heavily involved in a war in Syria. Even U.S. lawmakers who are normally considered hawkish, such as U.S. Senator John McCain of Arizona, are reluctant to embrace U.S. military intervention. American people are weary, as you pointed out. They don't want troops on the gr boots on the ground. I don't want boots on the ground. This week, Israeli military bombed Syria targets as the U.S. ponders the future for its military. Some have urged Washington to follow Tel Aviv's lead in battling Assad forces. But the White House has pushed back, saying it's not yet ready to put boots on the ground in a high-stakes geopolitical conflict. Colin Campbell, Washington. Syria's allies have made it clear that any military escalation by foreign powers supporting the armed opposition in Syria would trigger a counter-military escalation by these allies themselves. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stressed the necessity of investigating any reports on the use of chemical weapons in Syria. Lavrov also cautioned against using the chemical weapons factor as a means to displace the Syrian government, adding it was inadmissible to use this issue and speculate on it. Chairman of the Committee on National Security and Foreign Policy in the Iranian Parliament, Ala ad din Brojordi, also warned that any war on Syria would lead to the flames engulfing Tel Aviv. But perhaps the most explicit statement came from Hezbollah Secretary General Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. After a trip to Tehran where he met Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei and another meeting in Beirut with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister and Middle East Envoy Mikhail Bogdanov, Sayyid Hassan issued the following stance. uh, when you look at the region before the starting of uh, the problems or the crisis in, in Syria, um, the American withdrew in 2011, and you have a new shape in the Middle East where Iran has the upper hand. Mm -hmm. You know, having the upper hand. So, as you know, Sun Tzu says in his book. If you cannot really attack directly your enemy, you attack his strategy. So they picked Syria as the linchpin of the grand strategy of Iran. So imagine Iran, Syria, out of you know this strategic alliance with Iran, and with you have two different regions. So that's why th th this is most important. So what is important too, uh, what lengthened you know the regime's life and survival, is what's happening in Lebanon. We used to call. Lebanon is the underbelly or the soft belly of Syria. It's no more. The, the, the concept is valid. We are talking about Lebanon is the secure underbelly or soft belly of Syria. With Israel's enthusiasm for the downfall of Assad, both Iran and Hezbollah consider that the events taking place inside Syria are part of an Israeli-led campaign which not only targets the Syrian leadership but also its allies in the resistance axis. Russia, meanwhile, appears to have returned to its historic Cold War rivalry with Washington through the gateway of Syria. One of the many factors behind this emerging alliance could be related to confronting extremists represented by Al-Qaeda and its affiliates like Jabhat al-Nusra, 
which is the main fighting force in the armed opposition in Syria and which recently declared its allegiance to Al-Qaeda's leader, Ayman al-Zawahri. Such groups are believed as hostile to Iran and have also threatened Hezbollah. Al-Nusra also includes many fighters from the Russian province of Chechnya and from the Caucasus region, which is considered Moscow's backyard. Any intervention under the pretext of chemical weapons could lead to the repetition of the Libyan scenario where Al-Qaeda has established a strong footprint that has spread to nearby countries like Algeria and Mali. The crisis in Syria is already showing a similar spillover effect in Iraq and to a lesser extent in Lebanon and Jordan. Even in Turkey, a cell of Al-Qaeda operatives that was planning to target the U.S. Embassy was uncovered. All of this after Al-Qaeda declared its support for the armed opposition in Syria. فتصدون بصدوركم العارية لقذائف الدبابات وطلقات المدفعية والحوامات. But not only is this one of the factors which brings together the pro-Syrian alliance members, it is also a factor which only reinforces U.S. reluctance to intervene in Syria, particularly after Chris Stevens, the U.S. ambassador to Libya, was killed by extremists in Benghazi. And even the issue of chemical weapons and securing chemical weapon sites in Syria is believed to be something unfeasible militarily for the U.S., especially at a time where it is the purpose of downgrading its regional military presence. To secure the supposed chemical weapon sites would even lead to U.S. troop deployment in a country where Al-Qaeda has established a clear presence, thus making these troops targets for Al-Qaeda operatives. President Obama said, if you want to secure the chemical weapon of the Syrians, you need 70,000 people, 70,000 troops. From where? Mm -hmm. You remember? In Iraq, they had 120,000. So are he able, after his withdrawing from Iraq, to go in 70,000? Moreover, the 70,000, you need logistics, structure, legitimacy, and you need intelligence in order to really secure the chemical weapon. We are witnessing a phase of management of the situation. Sometimes in order to please his allies uh, in, in the region say we are sending some troops to Jordan. Yesterday or the day before they are doing mine sweeping maneuver in the Gulf near Iran, like in masses of Iran. Uh, the third day they are selling some advanced weapon to Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar and Israel. Uh, four, yesterday Kerry said we are, maybe you are changing our mind and we will uh, arm with lethal weapon to the... So it's about management without interfering. Taking all these facts into consideration, some believe that the U.S. will have no choice but to accept the Russian, Iranian and Hezbollah vision for Syria. Such a breakthrough is what many people await from the upcoming summit between U.S. President Barack Obama and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in June. Israeli concern that such a breakthrough could be reached may be one of the reasons we push the Israelis to make the chemical weapons announcement. Another development now with calls in the same category is the Israeli bombardment of a military research center in Jumbraya in the Damascus countryside. But it is not only Israel which has such a concern. Arab countries of the Persian Gulf, in addition to Turkey, have also been pushing the U.S. to do more to topple Assad. And in a recent visit to Washington, the Qatari Prime Minister Hamad bin Jassim reportedly called on the U.S. to take more action against the Syrian government. Hence, many anticipate that the current run-up period to the Obama-Putin summit will be decisive. President Assad, he is really trying to tie and create real safe haven or real secure area after maybe losing the east of Syria. And that's why you are seeing around Damascus attacking the rebels or you know Jabhat al-Nusra whatever mm -hmm. in order to really push them outside of the urban area. Moreover there was some attacks on the uh, line of communication or logistics line for the rebels that uh, come from uh, Jordan. Uh, moreover we see what's happening in Al Qasir. So maybe if you relate it geographically and topographically, it's like a secure area where you can really prepare yourself for the next phase. It's the counter offensive of the regime, and he's really succeeding in Al Utayba, in Ma'arat al Nu'man, Al Qasir, and around.
uh, Dimashq. So in this perspective, you have to be related, I guess, to the Russian rhetoric now. Bogdanov and the uh, uh, Russian ambassador in Lebanon. Moreover, you have to relate it to the next uh, uh, meeting between Lavrov and John Kerry, as well as the preparing everything in this region to the uh, Obama-Putin uh, uh, you know, meeting. The crisis in Syria appears to be reaching a critical point which will determine whether or not Syria will remain an integral part of a resistance axis. Israel's opening of the chemical weapons issue at this time shows that things might not be going as Israel has been planning on the Syrian battlefield. That'll be it for this edition of Middle East Today. Don't forget to join me next week. Bye for now.